Hi everyone, Nika Onola for here to make the invisible visible. And I just wanna get this out the way. First of all, thank you to all of my new subscribers. Second of all, I am an author and I have a book and it's called My Own Gaze, Memoir of an Invisible Black Woman. You'll be hearing more about that, but you can go to my website, nakaonolafor.com, or you can go on Amazon and purchase my book and I'm gonna show it to you. This is it. All right, got that out the way. I have a question. My question is, um, is there a white, Asian, Latino, uh, Native American Kevin Samuels? So is there a Kevin Samuels, someone who is like a Kevin Samuels in other communities? And I'm going to tell you in a moment why I'm asking that question. You all, um, what's going on online and in person in the black community? amongst you know black folks it's serious and i made a video uh some of you all may have watched uh, my video that's called i was invisible to black men for 15 years and if you haven't seen that i'll link it at the end but there's like a war going on and i want to say it's a silent war but i really can't even say it's silent i think it's actually pretty loud and it's happening like i said between black men and black women so some of you all make comments and, and first of all thanks to all, everyone who has made a comment on my videos and i was you know i'm still kind of getting through some of the comments i was able to read some of them many of you all are suggesting that i and that black women divest from black men so essentially date out and stop depending on them for everything <laughs> uh so and i hear that and, and some of you have suggested that i listen to cynthia g i have actually listened to some of some of cynthia g's videos However, I do think that myself and Cynthia G, we have different stance on this this topic. And, you know, some of what she says I agree with, some of it I don't. However, you know, we just need to really unpack and talk about the counsel that we are being given, you know, online. We need to unpack and talk about the counsel, right? Because what's going on is Oftentimes we think that we're consuming content and we're actually consuming someone's trauma and someone's unhealed wounds, someone's baggage. OK, now I'm going to kind of go into this topic a little bit. I first of all started this video off by asking, is there a Kevin Samuels, someone like a Kevin Samuels in other communities? I also understand that Kevin Samuels is no longer with us. Right. So in terms of where. I start with this, um, you know, again, we see in the media what's happening with Kyrie Irving. We see what's happening with Kanye. We see, you know, what happened with Nick Cannon. Um, there's a lot that I could say on this topic, but if I say too much, even I could get my video and potential videos and my entire channel removed <laughs> from YouTube. So I'm going to say as much as I feel comfortable. But we see black men, in this case, speaking out against the powers that be. And we know what power we're talking about. We know that black people don't control the media. We suspect, and many of us know, who may, who may control the media. We see black men speaking out. And we also see the consequences that come with these men speaking out. We see how powerless black people really are in these moments that are that is happening with Kyrie Irving, happening with Kanye, has happened with Nick Cannon and, and countless others. OK, so stay with me. I'm making a point here. So we see the powerlessness that black people have in society. We see the powerlessness that in this case, I'm talking about black men, but black women also have layers of powerlessness as well. How do we process that? How do we process living in a society, you know, living in a country where we can't even speak up, essentially? Us speaking up is considered a crime, and especially speaking up against things that are pretty blatant and obvious, right? You know, we're oftentimes bullied by whatever powers that be. I'm not going to say who. We're oftentimes bullied into, um, we're, we're bullied into having to uh, be a puppet and pretend 
and go along with things for the sake of maintaining our income. You know, um, now think about the average everyday black man. So let's just take it away from, let's, you know, let's talk. I'm not going to keep talking about Kyrie Irving and Kanye and Nick Cannon, but let's just look at the average everyday black man. And let's think of the, the, the power or the lack thereof that this person, this black man has, right? Or doesn't have. How in the world do you think as, as, as black people, and, and in this case, as black men, what do they do with all of that frustration? And what do they do with all of that? Um, what do they do with the lack of power that they're really able to have in society? Where is that being channeled? Okay, like where? Where is it being channeled? So when I open up YouTube, you know, oftentimes, you know, YouTube app, I see various videos, you know, and I watch, you know, I, I particularly appreciate black YouTube, what I call black YouTube. And for those of you who are avid YouTube watchers, you know what I'm talking about. Um, however, a lot of what is on the black YouTube stream and the black YouTube channels is... um trauma and pain and hurt. And, 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 and I would even go as far as saying, you know, and again, I'm not necessarily against any black woman who is choosing to divest from black men. I understand where that comes from. However, I also don't necessarily think the solution is that. Why? Because a lot of people are talking about divesting from black men, but they are sleeping black. They might be going on dates, with white men, but they're still entangled with black men. Okay. And, and last time I checked, um, I do still think the statistics say that most black women who are married are married to black men or, and even the other way around, excuse me. I think most black men who are married are also married to black women. So will Billy, you know, take you on a date? Yes. Is Billy marrying you at the same rate that black men are? Even though I know black men are not marrying us at a super high rate, <laughs> but perhaps the rate that they're married, perhaps the rate that black men are marrying us at is still higher than the rate that Billy and Bob are marrying us. So again, you know, saying divest, saying you divest from black men, but still entangled with black men, going on dates with white men, but in private, still dealing with black men, still sleeping with black men. Okay. That's not divesting. So again, I don't think that that's solution. So going back into the, the topic here about therapy, you know, so I, I, you know, you open the YouTube app, you see all these, all this different content. My content hopefully is making it into the canon of, um, of black YouTube, but you know, just really process and think about out of all this content, that I'm consuming out of all this content that I'm consuming that other people are consuming how much is healthy how much is is how much is helping me and one of the ways that you can tell if you should trust a content creator or if you should listen to someone's message is how vulnerable are they being okay like how vulnerable are they being meaning you know I know that Kevin Samuels often positioned himself as the expert. I think he rarely said if he was wrong. Um, rarely did you hear him express vulnerability, own uh, drawbacks, his own flaws. It was all about, I'm the expert. I'm telling you what you need to do for a better life. But then you looked at his own life and you didn't necessarily see the results that he was telling other people to, you know, pursue. Okay. So there wasn't vulnerability. And by vulnerability, I don't mean that you have to you know, reveal all your secrets, but it's just, are you, you know, are you following people who are positioning themselves as the ultimate expert, as the know-it-all and saying they have it all figured out and especially saying that, but then you see in their own life that it's actually not. Derek Jackson, another person who, and again, I mean, I've watched, you know, some of his videos over the years, but certainly, um, you know, we all probably know about the scandal that happened uh, with the infidelities and, you know, with him being married and most people, when that happened, they were like, I didn't even know he was married, you know? So he's a relationship coach that coach that doesn't ever, 
ever say ever even reference that he has a relationship which i think is a little strange now, again not saying that he has to air all his dirty laundry or even talk about the dynamics between him and his wife but in most cases a legitimate um relationship coach will make references every now and then to their own personal lives and again they will not position themselves as knowing everything about relationships many of them admit that they're still trying to figure it out right and most of what i saw from Derek jackson was he he positioned himself as the ultimate expert and and uh in in some way so again so so we really have to look at this because I do believe that there are a lot there are a lot of um content creators who are creating content and they really need a therapist. They really actually need someone to sit down and hear what they have to say, someone to empathize with them, okay? But they're using they're using the, the platforms to to gain um confidence to you know whatever they missed either in their marriages or as a child or you know whatever kind of traumas or um, issues they have they then go online and project that outward to the entire internet and and i would even say and, and this is rep in reference to my video about you know being invisible in minnesota to black men very similarly you know very similarly i assume that a lot of the men that you know didn't even speak and again i'm not saying speak like trying to you know holler at me in a sense but i'm saying even just speak to say hi i i assume that they have the issue like if you can't even say hi to another black person and you two might be the only two black people in the vicinity of miles <laughs> possibly then who has the issue is it the person you know who is trying to speak or the person who doesn't want to because they feel so uncomfortable so again you know um we have to all be mindful about what we're consuming and by and by who who are we consuming it from okay and looking into looking at them or whoever you know in this case you know let's just say Derek jackson looking and seeing okay well how vulnerable is this person how open is this person does this person have the life that they're advising for everyone else to have do they have the relationship that they're advising everyone else should have so you know again i want you all to comment below if you think that this dynamic you know is there a um i don't know much about the manosphere red pill all that stuff i don't know much about that but does that happen in other communities is that happening amongst you know a different asian ethnic groups is that happening uh, you know amongst different latino uh latina groups like I, it seems to me like a lot of these things red pill manosphere a lot of this you know divesting that is happening in the black community it seems like there is a war comment if you agree or disagree so even with me, you know, you may be thinking, okay, well, how do I know I can trust you? <laughs> how, do, how do I know you don't need therapy? I do think that on some level, as, as, as people, especially as black people, I think we all could benefit from therapy. So in no way am I saying that there are some of us who don't need it. But I think you, you want to be careful about someone who needs therapy because they are narcissistic and various other, you know, even though I don't think that therapy can cure narcissism, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, you know, I think that we all need therapy on some level, but you, you just have to be careful about the messages that you're um, internalizing. And, you know, I wrote a book. Uh, again, I, I referenced my book at the, at the beginning, My Own Gaze, Memoir of an Invisible Black Woman. And in, in many ways, that was me writing this book was therapy for me, right? But I also understand that when I come on line and I'm delivering messages to be um, cautious with how I say things. You know, I keep it real, but I also don't use keeping it real as an excuse to hurt people. So these are some of the nuances that you need to pay attention to as you're uh, digesting content. So, and I would also use the example from media, you know, from the music industry. I would use the example from the music industry. Um, think about how many songs you listen to with all the curse words and all the promiscu promiscuity that's being promoted and all of that stuff. And, you know, we turn on the radio, we listen to it, we dance to it, we twerk to it or whatever. But like most of this stuff is not healthy. 
most of this stuff is just completely toxic. And, and in many ways, the, you know, we're consuming um, music by people who are broken. You know, folks who are making songs and they're airing out their traumas, but there's no solution at the end of the song. There's no, um, you want to really tease out, are you consuming truth or are you consuming trauma? I have to even own up to the fact that even I, although to me it was more of a case study, but even I watched and listened to some of Kevin Samuels, many of Kevin Samuels' videos. So I think that's, um, you know, as much as I would like to say on this topic, again, comment below and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Bye.